Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. Welcome to uh, 2022 uh, and a new uh, year and a new uh, bunch of episodes of Condo Insider. And I'm really pleased to say that this is our third year. I can't believe we're doing year three. And uh, this is all because of Senator Rosalind Baker, who challenged us to come up with some kind of a platform where we could offer education to condo owners and board members and people in the industry uh, that was free and could be seen through any device without going to a meeting. So thank you for joining us. And I have as my guest today, Tim Apicella, who's part of, uh, a, a part of the board of the Hawaii Council. And we're gonna be talking about the year that was and what can we expect this year? And what kind of things can we expect this year? So let's start with some, uh, some legislative stuff. Uh, Tim, thank you for being my guest today. Oh, thank you for having me. And it's good to be back on Condo Insider. I love this show. Well, you know, the Florida condo collapse, I mean, that, that was a big wake up call for Hawaii. Uh, but you know, luckily we have in place something called a budget and reserves law. And I've been told that it's kind of it's it's kind of good and it's better than most of the uh, types of statutes you know on the mainland. The problem with our statute is it really has no discretion. It doesn't say when you will do the reserve study. You know how, you know how you know how often you have to do it and who has to do it. And you know so you know there are some concerns because with the Florida collapse, what happened is it was all within the discretion of the board. And, and somebody dropped the ball and look at what happened, right? And so I guess the concern is, okay, we gotta do something to make sure that what happened in Florida doesn't happen here. And so I'm hearing some stuff and I just wanna get your feedback. Uh, and, and this is, I mean, as we speak, the legislature just opened up yesterday and there are bills in the hopper and I'm kind of interested to see what's coming out, but what this is what I've heard uh, the budget, budget and reserves law is chapter 514B148 for those of people who want to look it up on the internet and, and see what it's all about. But that ordinance, you know, requires boards to do a reserve study. And when they do their budget on every year, which they're supposed to do, they got to figure out how much money to sock away for the deferred maintenance, right? The stuff that doesn't happen every year, like the roof the spalling, the building painting, right? So that there's money, uh, at, when, when it comes time to do those repairs, there's money. So you don't have to special assess the owners. And you know the, the, the challenge there is that, you know, a lot of the people who sit on boards, they think keeping maintenance fees low is a good thing. And that makes them popular, you know, with all the other owners. Say, oh yeah, this is a good thing. We're not gonna raise maintenance fees. But what happens in the end, is you don't have money to spend on repairs and you have a situation like the condo collapse that happened in you know this past year. So you know, so they're looking at ways to try to address it. And one thing uh I uh I heard they're trying to do, they're gonna do is insert language that says who can do the reserve study. And it's gotta be somebody who's a certified reserve specialist, not connected or affiliated with the managing agent because that's a conflict of interest. And a lot of I mean, what I'm hearing is that there are some management companies out there who somehow have reserve specialists and they provide this service to their associations. Have you heard that? Well, yeah, I've heard that. And also there seems to be, in my mind, um, the closing of the loop of responsibility. Um, you know, do you, did you identify all the, the, the systems that you really need to consider for the next 40 years out? Uh, and did you properly reserve for them? And, uh, there's a building in my neighborhood, and I won't mention the name. Um, I'm sure they feel bad enough as it is. But each unit was assessed $108,000 per unit. And that was a catastrophic um, faux pas on the uh, previous boards to not calculate what it's going to cost for a, a, a building that has so many glass windows. In fact, it's really a glass building with some concrete around it rather than a concrete building with glass within it. Um, and so each unit, they never set aside for glass. In all the, the 40 years, uh, 45 years, the building's been in existence, not a nickel. How does that happen? 
Yeah, well, see, th that's one, and, and that's another change that's going to be made because right now, right now, the budget and reserve statute says that you will do your a reserve. You, you know, you would set up your reserves and you look at a twenty-year life. Uh, what what is it called? A, a life. Life interest? expectancy of life, or... life is expectancy, right? Yeah. And you know what happened? Because of the 20 years, you didn't have pipes included in the reserve study. And that's why when you had these buildings where the pipes failed, of course, pipes are supposed to last 75 years. I mean, that was what everybody thought. We, we, now we know differently. And you know what happened when those pipes failed? You had people pointing fingers and say, ah, it's your fault. Why didn't you set up a reserve? It's because the statute doesn't allow for it. So now one of the changes that they're going to do is to change that 20 years to make it 30 or longer. Mm -hmm. Because now then, you know, now you're going to have to put in pipes and now glass, you know, because that's not a, a normal item that's on a reserve study. And that's what people have to understand is they're going to, the reserve study has to be based on their billing. And what happens is a lot of these reserve studies, they're canned computer programs, right? With items on it. And, and, and so the board has to be really uh, cognizant that their, 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 their equipment and, you know, their items, their reserve study, the reserve items are in this CAN program. And if it's not, to tell the reserve specialist, oh, we got this piece of equipment, it's not on your CAN program. So you got to add it to your CAN program and find out what the useful life is and what it's going to cost to replace so that our reserve study is accurate. Right? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Um, you know, Florida and, and many states have a, depending on the age of the building, a certification process. If it's 40 years old, it has to pass a certification that it's a viable building that uh, has a life expectancy and there's no uh, major system failures on the horizon. Um, I kind of thought that at one point, maybe Hawaii would start considering that that kind of provision, but you know, they're focusing their attention on the finances and the budget, um, you know, uh, and the um, recertif not recertification, but the, the reserve report. And uh, you know, that's a good way to go too. But I just curious what you thought about um, a building certification process. Well, that, that there was a bit, there was a time uh, where a bill like that was in the legislature, in the city council. Do you remember a couple of years ago around Christmas time, there were some people, there were two guys and they were contractor people and they were at the Ala Moana shopping center and they were fixing something and they, they fell against the rail and the rail failed and they fell. One was killed, one was injured. Because we do remember that, that, yes. Right, because of that, there was a bill introduced in the city council called a building envelope um, bill, which would have called for periodic a building envelope, would, you would have somebody inspect the outside of a building to make sure it was structural, structurally sound. And that would include, you know, with residential buildings, you're talking about lanai's and the railings, right? Because the railings sit in concrete. And if you have spalling, I mean, that what, what, what the spalling does is it goes in and it, it, it affects the rebars. And you can't see it, except that there might be cracks on the lanai. But, you know, you don't know if that railing is secure unless you have somebody actually go up and check it, right? And so, so, that, so, so there was a building envelope bill. And you know, the, uh, although we, we, we uh, Hawaii Council went in and we uh, opposed it, DPP opposed it as well. They said, we don't have the, you know, this is government. We don't have the money. We don't have the inspectors. You're gonna give us more money? Because if you don't give us more money, then, then you know, we oppose this bill. And we didn't want it because we could, it's going to be more cost for us. You know, that means we got to go out and hire engineers and we got to do something to submit a report, you know, just like we do with the fire safety. And, you know, right now, based on, and we're going to get to the fire safety, the unintended consequences of, you know, having, you know, a, a, of the fire safety ordinance. And, and, and now we have a big insurance problem. And, and you know, so I'm, 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 I'm very hesitant. I'm very hesitant to support new legislation that would make, give us another requirement that the buildings have to do because we have a, an existing law. We have the building in reserve. And if we tighten that up, 
Mm -hmm. You know, and we can get and we can educate boards, with, which is what Hawaii Council does, which is what CAI does, the um, real estate uh, commission, real estate branch of this, uh, the DCCA. They do seminars. If we all, you know, get together because we all teach the same thing. We all and we we talk about budget and reserves all the time. And now because of the condo collapse, they're talking about it even more. And, you know, because. You know, you take, you know, rather than passing a new law, let's work with the old law. And what they're doing, what I've heard is they're going to, they're, they're saying, you know, saying very specifically who can, who should be doing this and saying you got to do it every two or three years. And one thing that I've suggested is that if you, you know, if you haven't done, I mean, if you're a reserve study now, you should, you know, because all the reserve studies have dates on it, you should look at the dates. And if it was done before 2020, it's time to get a new one. Because with the supply chain problem and what is it, the, the great retirement or the great resignation or whatever they're calling it, right? Your labor costs have gone up, the costs have gone up. And, you know, those of us who sit on boards, we can't even get estimates for, for repair work on our condos because nobody knows when the stuff, when, when, when the parts and the materials are going to get to Hawaii because of the supply chain problem and they don't have workers. And so, you know, the cost is going up. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a concern. You, you mentioned one thing that I really liked, and that is, you know, those that do the reserve study are a um, independent and an arm's length transaction away. You know, I'm reminded of, you know, all the bank debacles and, and all the foreclosures and all the, the banks that went under because the appraisers worked for the bank. Yeah. And, and then, you know, after, after the collapse of 2008, they made a very hard and fast rule that all appraisers must be independent and have no affiliation with the lending institution that made those loans. And I think that's a great idea to have um, certified uh, reserve specialists that are a, at an arm's length transaction away from um, the companies that uh, serve those condo associations. Right, because you know, you know, you got to have somebody who's who's like a third party to be independent, so that they, you know, they can give you a neutral picture of what your building is not somebody who's affiliated with somebody on the board or with management who wants to keep your who purposely wants to you know keep your costs low because that's what happened in florida i mean people didn't want to spend the money or they were afraid to or they didn't want to take the action and because of the inaction and the delays the building collapses and you know we can't you know deal with that and you know one of the other changes they're, they're, they're talking about is starting the, the process earlier. You know how developers have to do these public reports for brand new condos? Insert a requirement in the public reports that they've got to set up, you know, uh, do a reserve study at the beginning. Because that way, when somebody buys into the building, they will know what it's gonna cost them, deferred maintenance, right? Yeah. Right now- you know, How many know. times do people buy a brand new condo and, and the maintenance dues are ridiculously cheap and then three years later, wham, you know, they're up 100% or, or better. Right. And, you know, I didn't see that coming. Um, so, yeah, a realistic reserve replacement report on a brand new building would be great. That's a great idea. So, so that's, that's something that I heard, you know, was, was already proposed. And, you know, one, one other thing is that, you know, and, and this happened in our condo, at our condominium. Every year when the board sits down and does their budget, they're given a percentage by the by their management company saying to make to maintain your budget and to make sure that you have enough money for the reserves based on your reserve study. We recommend that you raise your maintenance fees 12, 15% or something like that. Okay. That's the recommendation. And so what does our board do? Our board comes in at six. And not, notwithstanding, you know, my protestations and my grumbling. <laughs> it passed at six. And so uh, I have to join with the people who are saying, we got to put legislation in there that if you're going to deviate from what the expert says, you have, you have to, you, you know, have to do for maintenance fees. It's, and, 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 and if you don't go out and find an expert who's going to back you up on that reduced amount, the breach of fiduciary duty, mm -hmm. right? Because the business judgment rule says, you can rely on an expert opinion. And if you deviate from that expert opinion, you're on your own. No DNO coverage, you know, and things like that. And I kind of like that, you know, uh, because, you know, that way, and then that way the board members, you know, they don't feel guilty. I mean, they can say, well, the expert told us 
we had to raise your maintenance fees 12%, 15%, whatever. And it's it's not that they're being mean to the owners, right? It's not like, you know, because right now- government kinda, the bad guy. <laughs> right, it's, it's kind of like, you don't want to be the bad guy and owners are grumbling, you know, well, you know, you're the bad guy who raised our maintenance fees. But, you know, th that's what the owners have to realize that it's being, it's getting expensive to maintain and repair buildings. It costs money. And, you know, and then when we get to, you know, the fire safety and talking about insurance, I mean, you can't have, you know, five, six percent maintenance fee manual increases when your insurance goes up 30%. Yeah. I mean, do the math. I mean, it doesn't work. You know, Jane, there's one point I've, I've noticed in my 20 plus year, 25 years serving on boards, and that is sometimes a board is comp comprised of those who are retired. And I hate to say it, but I've seen it firsthand where, um, you know, ex executive members of a board of directors, um, they don't want to improve the building because they're worried about uh, uh, an increase of uh, property tax evaluations, which correlates into higher taxes. So um, either purposely or, or, you know, subconsciously, they're not improving the building and, and keeping it viable and safe um, because they're, they're worried about increased valuations. Except, you know, my response to that is, you know, what's happening now because of the condo collapse and the fire safety regulation and everything else, the lenders are asking questions. They never asked questions before. Right. The insurance companies and the lenders, they're sending, you know, people to look at the building and, and they're basically, you know, with the lenders, they want to know how much money have you set aside for reserves? And is it 50% funded as required by the statute? And they want to see the documents. And they want to know um, if you have fire sprinklers. If you don't have fire sprinklers, why not? Or when are you going to do it? And it's like, excuse me, but why are you asking these questions? <laughs> and it's because, you know, they don't want to lend money or they don't want to lend money to prospective purchasers to buy into a building because what the lenders see is that down the road, there's going to be an assessment, right? Right. See, well, and, and that plays to the ordinance that's on the books right now, because if the ordinance is on the books, then they just say, hey, we're just following what's already law of the land in Hawaii. Right. And, you know, that's maybe one of the reasons we're here today to talk about that existing law and, and whether it's um, a flawed law or not. Right, and why don't we just segue right into it? <laughs> because, you know, we have the fire safety ordinance and, you know, and the whole purpose of the fire safety ordinance was after the Marco Polo fire was to make buildings safer. And I think there are a lot of buildings in town who are saying, well, you know, we're not the Marco Polo and, you know, Marco Polo had all these things wrong with it and we're better than that. And how come we have to now comply with this law that says that we have to, that mandates fire sprinklers unless we pass a life safety evaluation. But you know, anymore that's become moot. But because of the fire safety, the, what, the unintended consequence of the fire safety ordinance is that the insurance premiums are going up. And not only are they going up, but if they have these standard you know, insurance companies, so if you have a fireman's fund or a first insurance or an, you know, the, the local ones, right? If you decide to leave them, nobody else is going to touch you if you don't have sprinklers, you know, and 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 the ones that you know. So the the ones that they're they're, they're called the standard market, and the standard market they're asking and they're they're saying, in fact, my building, my building this year, the incre the insurance premiums increased thirty percent. That translates to forty four thousand dollars for my association in one year. And, you know, so I don't know how we're going to do that. With well, the, the old saying, give them an inch and they'll take a mile. But, you know, that's what they're doing. <laughs> and, and, you know, and we're told that, you know, the insurance is going to go up every year, so long as it's non-sprinkler. And, and so that means even if you decide, you know, e even if you pass the life safety and you don't put in sprinklers, your insurance is going to go up. You know, you and so I had a... We're caught between a rock and a hard spot. Yeah, and, and see, I, I think it's a flawed law. And when, you know, Mayor Caldwell came out with, I think it was Bill 69, shortly after the Marco Polo fire, um, I felt it was a flawed law to begin with because, 
you know, to mandate the installation of, of sprinklers requires the, I call it the confiscation of, of airspace. Each unit, my ownership is defined by my airspace from the ceiling down, the floor up and the walls in. That's my property rights. Mm -hmm. So now you're gonna confiscate 12 to 13 inches of pipe and, and, and stanchions and, and sprinkler heads in, my, in each, you know, each room of my dwelling. Um, I'm not sure you get the right to do that without fair and just compensation to the homeowner, the unit owner. Well, so you know, it, 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 I thought it was a flaw. I think it's a flawed law to begin with, to be honest with you. Right. But the problem is, and the problem is, you know, the bill, the ordinance passed 5 4, which is just barely passing. Right. So, and, 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 and that's another thing. We're coming up to, with elections 2022. And I believe there's three, three seats that are up for, you know, because they're term limited. And unfortunately, one of them is Carol Fukunaga, who is our champion, who is fighting for us all the time. So, you know, for those of you listening and who live in who live in Carol Fukunaga's district, you better, you know, be very, very ask lots of questions, whoever's running for her seat in 2022, because you want to make sure who's ever take whoever gets elected into that seat is going to protect your interests like Carol did. And you know, so so you know, that's that's a, that's a concern. And so, you know, yes, if we can get five people on the city council to repeal this law, it'll be gone. The problem is it's harder to repeal a law than it is to get it passed. And so, yeah, it's, it's gonna take a lot of e electioneering and, and arm twisting, but you know, we get five people on the city council and then this next election, I mean, that might be one, one way to go, but we are looking at, I mean, that was an unintended consequence. Well, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that the 360 associations that are affected by this, you know, this sprinkler law, I'm sure not one of them thought that conducting the LSE, the life saving evaluation, was going to be more cumbersome and more expensive than the installation of a sprinkler system, which is catastrophically expensive. I mean, it's 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 a it's a humongous sudden expense that people hadn't reserved for. Right, and and in the Marco Polo, it costs five point four million dollars. Yeah, five point four million dollars it cost them. So you know, I know the LSE was, uh, if you will, kind of a, a good idea for mitigation, but as you say, it's an unintended consequences. And and so let's go to the heart of the matter, and that is those buildings that were not mandated to have a sprinkler system. What do you do with those buildings? And you know, spending million in an LSE or spending millions on a sprinkler system that the resident unit owners don't have. Um, there's something that has to give there somewhere, somewhere along the line. Well, you know, Carol Fukunaga is part of Bill 37 that's pending now in the city council. She is going to set up something called a permitted interaction group. It's called a pig, a permitted interaction group. Okay. <laughs> to and 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 Hawaii Council has done a a, a survey. And we sent it out to, to I, and I think we got uh, maybe over 30 associations who, who got it, who, who, you know, who filled it out and sent it back. And we turned everything over to this council member. And so she's going to be setting up a permitted interaction group. So anybody who's interested might want to call her office and, and ask to be put on it. It's Carol Fukunaga, council member Carol Fukunaga. And, um, and she's going to make like announcements and 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 one of the you know one of the things is is to get financing because this is something that the city requires of these people who live in these 360 buildings and 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 Carol uh council member Fukunaga you know truly believes that that the government needs to subsidize some portion of the cost because you know it it is you know an extremely uh expensive you know um, installation. So that's one of the things that is going to be explored. And she believes that it's going to be a statewide issue because I told her about the insurance problem. And the insurance commissioner is the one who sets rates. And that's when we got into the conversation of what if we change the state law, like the budget and reserves or something, to make certain requirements, the building do certain things. That way it will calm the insurance companies down to say, oh, well, look, we're toughening up this, you know, condo law. So now associations, you know, they have to, you know, set aside certain money. They have to do the reserve study. They have to do, you know, certain inspections on a timely basis. And that way the insurance, comp uh, the insurance commissioner who sets the rates 
will say, well, we've taken this action to reduce the risk to the insurance companies. So we're not going to allow you to raise your rates 30% per every year. You, you know, know, that's a great. Mean? I'm glad to hear that because my alternative thought was, well, whatever financing is available, you still have to pay it back. Yeah. And if it's even if it's an interest free loan, you're still paying principal back. And so my think, thinking was, well, I hope it's a 30 year amortization because you know, we got 7%, 8% inflation right now. And now you're going to have the, the, the insurance premiums go up, which is directly correlated to your homeowner's dues. I yeah. don't see how people are going to, to, to make it. I don't see how they're going to fill the pukas of um, what they don't have. Right. But you know what, what, what Carol, what Senator Fukunaga wants to do is to do this uh, permitted interaction group and then come up with recommendations to send over to the state because she was in the state government at one time, so she kind of knows how it works. And she's and 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 she says that the insurance the insurance commissioner can can set the rates. And so if the insurance companies are raising the premiums thirty percent, they have to give some rationale. And I'm sure that's what they did to the uh, com commission this time, saying, "Oh well, the city has this law that mandates sprinklers, and so you have three hundred buildings in the city and county of Honolulu that don't have sprinklers. So we want to raise." you know, we want to raise the rates. And so he, he's allowing them. But, you know, by the same token, if we go to the commissioner and say, hey, commissioner, we'll toughen up the condo law so that associations don't have so much discretion. They got to, you know, keep their nose to the grindstone. They got to, you know, be, be cognizant of the repairs and maintenance and to make sure there's financing and to do the inspections where they're supposed to be so we don't have things like, by Marco Polo fires and a condo collapse. And if we do that, if the law is changed to make those restrictions tougher on associations, make them more accountable, then you, Mr. Commissioner, you got to tell the insurance companies that they can't raise their rates. Because what we don't want is for the commissioner to say, oh, you can't raise your rates. And then the, you know, then the insurance companies say, well, they leave. They, they leave. Yeah. They leave. Right. And right now, you know, we don't have a whole lot of insurance companies because they you know hawaii has got is has got the most it's got the highest claims in the whole country for dno do you know that the claims that are made i'm, I'm not surprised um i think there's a lot of board members who just love the title of board member but have not a clue to what their fiduciary duty is to their owners i, I i'm not surprised at that what you just said no yeah and and, and sue savio says we've got the highest number of claims uh per capita than any other state in the country and the claims are higher so if there's a claim on the mainland for 25 in hawaii it's 50. you know so so, so that's why we only have a few DNO carriers who, you know, will offer, you know, coverage. And we don't want to be in a situation where we chase away some of the standard insurance companies. And by the same token, you know, so that means that we have to step up to the plate and persuade the carriers that we're going to take steps to make sure that the buildings are going to take care of their structure. Right, do so, due diligence and everything. Your your conversation leads me to this one thing that's confusing is regarding the reserve studies and and maybe the tough toughening of guidelines for the reserve studies. Who would be the final arbitrator of to say whether this study is an an accurate portrayal of that association's budget? Well, we kind of have to try. That's why, you know, all we can do is set parameters and we want to set very, right now there are, there are none. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the statute that says who does your reserve study? How often do you have to do it? And, you know, uh, and, and if they tell you that it's 12%, that you have to raise your maintenance fees 12%. There's nothing in the statute that right. requires that to happen. And so what, what we're saying is, well, maybe we need to start make, taking steps because if you leave it to the discretion of the boards, you're going to get, you know, people, you're going to get maybe 10% of the boards who are educated, who go to seminars, who read stuff that's online. And the, the, the real estate commission page, the, the real estate branch, which is free, their website is full of information, full of very good information. It's free. And, you know, so for, for those kinds of boards who educate themselves, then, you know, we, we, we know that they're going to take care of the buildings 
and we know that there are lots, you know, there are lots of buildings that way, but for the others, and you know, boards are volunteer members, right? You and I know, you know, who serves on boards. And sometimes it's scary. It's a nightmare. <laughs> it's right? <always> scary. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's the guy who owns 17 units and wants to keep his maintenance fees low and, and, and stuff like that. Or, you know, it's people with their own agendas and, and, you know, not thinking about the entire association as they're supposed to do when they do their fiduciary duty. That's the scary part. Yeah. And so, so what we do is we take away some of their discretion and we do it by legislation and, and hopefully that will persuade the insurance companies to keep their uh, premiums lower, and maybe it will result in safer buildings. You know that that will prevent the Marco Polo fire and the Florida collapse. I think those are the two the two main issues that are kind of driving uh, the legislation and the education programs that we're all involved in. I think it's important because if you want to maintain the concept of self-governance for the, the concept of condominiums, then the Wild West has to stop. I mean, there has to be... You hit, yeah, you hit it right on the nose. I mean, if, if people want to maintain self-governance, they got to be responsible. They got to step up to the plate. They got to do the... They got to make the hard decisions for the whole association. And, 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 and to the extent that's done, then I don't think we have a problem. The problem is is that we all we all know that there are some associations out there who don't have a clue and they really don't care and 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 for those for those associations we've got to make these uh we have to set you know very specific parameters so that there's not a whole lot of wiggle room so it's not like oh well I don't I don't agree with you so I'm going to do this and that it's well no the statute says this is what you have to do i think we have to get to that well, and we know from all walks of our lives is that it's always the few that ruin it for the rest of us. The responsible parties always have to suffer the consequences of those that have not been responsible. And for not taking care of a building and, and, and maintaining safety standards, I think that's the ultimate of, of irresponsibility. And uh, we're all going to pay the price, and we are paying the price through higher insurance premiums and everything else. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm looking at, you know, we, we're, we've run out of time. And I know we could, we, you know, we had other stuff that we were going to talk about. I didn't think we, we would, you know, I thought we, we wouldn't have enough time, but it seems like we only talked about two of the four. So we're going to have to do this again, Tim. Okay. <laughs> okay. And for the viewers who, you know, tuned in today, thank you very much uh, for uh, sharing your time with us. And please join us next week, Thursday, for another episode of Condo Insider. Mahalo and aloha. Aloha. Uh -huh.